One of the problems with modern dentistry is that dentists like to make the fillings look tooth colored so much that it's hard to tell when they need to be done. Here's the tooth colored filling, and you can see the round, it's around the angle in the side there. That's just the side, uh, a little bit of recession on the person's tooth as well. When we look at the top portion of the tooth, though, you can see the brown that's around the tooth colored filling. And this filling uh, was done over another filling. So in other words, the dentist um, who came in to do the work um, removed a tooth colored filling but wasn't able to get all of it out and he placed this filling over the tooth colored one. And that can happen when the tooth colored filling is quite involved and looks the same color as the tooth. And that gives a good reason why someone should put down a base or to allow the uh, tooth colored filling material to be a different color. One that, you know, I mean, it's like really has some contrast to it. Uh, it's, so that it would be whiter. You can see the decay that's up underneath this filling right now. And it um, uh, truly the original filling material is in a number of different spots. You can see the decay and the brown that's there. And later on in this video, you'll see that we really spent a fair amount of time. And that whole corner where I'm drilling right now is full of tooth colored material right there. And it gets undermined and we'll actually see a stress fracture that that whole cusp is undermined. So we go ahead and start removing. And sometimes using a very slow speed and piece um, will allow you to get a much better idea of where the composite is. The problem with the composite resin is, is that it actually is difficult to um, dulls the instruments, so you go through an, a number of instruments, and so it takes a lot more time, and it's more expensive. And I'm using this at a very slow speed, you see the composite that's still there, we're not down to the actual tooth yet. You don't want to overheat it, and so the RPM on this electric hand piece is really uh, very slow. And You'll also notice that periodically we'll use water to keep things cool, uh, but there's still a layer of composite there even before you get down to the uh, brown decay. Now, it doesn't mean that when something's brown that it's necessarily a cavity, but when it's peeled away with a spoon, you know that it's soft and it should be You can see the beginnings of that stress fracture there as we look at the tooth on that right in that corner right there. And so we're going to go ahead and remove the rest of it. And there it is. And you can't really leave that there. The person's going to end up uh, fracturing the tooth and losing it. And so this is a crown buildup with a preparation with the idea that we'll eventually go ahead and remove uh, that we're going to do a, cat, uh, a crown. And you can see how the tooth is being peeled away now. And all of that needs to be removed. And like I mentioned before, you can go back and look at the x-ray in the beginning. The tooth itself has two layers of composite. One, the original one, where it was diagnosed that there was a problem, and then the dentist went in and wasn't able to see. Now, if you notice, I'm also using a mirror to help me to see down inside the tooth as I do the drilling because that you really can't see the mesial or that angle there very well without using a mirror. 
So from up on top, it doesn't look all that bad, but you can see the cusp there is undermined where the stress fracture is. And someone would be, and here's the base that we're placing, someone would be tempted to just leave it this way, but over time, there's a pretty good chance that the person's going to break that tooth, assuming that they have normal occlusion. So we take an x-ray, and you can see how close we are to the nerve, and this x-ray has the actual uh, base layer there uh, that you can see, and we also take a periapical to make sure that the nerve is doing okay, and presently it is, and but that will give us a baseline for later on if there seems to be a problem. So there um, was decay up underneath the uh, cusp there as well, and so we go ahead and make sure that polished and the uh, decay removed, and it is a thin wall. When we're finished, we'll check the occlusion and make sure that um, the tooth itself has, uh, now I see a little spot there that has decay and uh, or appears to me, it might be stained, but with everything that being decay before, it makes more sense than it is. So I go in and uh, um, remove that. And as you can see, this is where the mirror came in very handy. And we were able to go in and remove it um, because you wouldn't normally see that spot. And so working on lower molars in particular, um, using a mirror to uh, evaluate the way the drill and everything out. Now I take a look at the buckle here and you can see that kind of whitish area and I dry it and sure enough there's composite there from before and I would have been, if I left it that way, I would be just leaving a layer of composite. And so we go back and spend the time to remove it. Now, some people feel that, okay, well, if you're sure there isn't decay, go ahead and leave it. But you don't have the original filling material. The resin material doesn't bond um, like it, it should when it's new. The uh, chemistry is really meant to have everything included at the same time. Also, there's really no way to know if there was decay there if you didn't replace it yourself. And so here's the filling. It's fairly good size, it's polished up, we adjusted the cusp so that a uh, person couldn't chew on it uh, when you go side to side with the actual occlusion we could. Nice and polished, but truly needs a ground.